third list. So this is Joel Davis, and he did the Denver 40K. So this has had 70 players at this one. Okay, so let's look at the placings. So Joel Davis did end up dropping one game, but as you can see, he had six games. So let's take a look at Joel Davis getting second place. So his first matchup. Oh, oops, sorry, guys. Jump to the list. So here his his list. And again, we have the Beast Boss on Squigasaur. So I wanted to point that out again. Beast Boss and Squigasaur and the Captain Badrock combo has been on all three lists. Yes, all three lists. Uh, it really did catch me off guard. I mean, we literally just did the Orcs Power Rankings. Beast Boss, Squigasaur didn't even make it into there. Um, I hadn't seen other lists with him really being on there, being very, very, like, too highly successful. Now, no outliers. But all of a sudden, just back to back on this week, all the most successful lists have him. Also, we have a... a um, Another list that, but it doesn't have them. But for the most part, these three that we're covering, though. So, and and of course, Mazarog is included in there, right? So you have the Knob on Smash Squig with Follow Me Lads and a Warboss Super Cyborg Body. Um, this is a very good character, you know, combination right here. Very durable, um, killing potential, and I like the distribution of the enhancements. Only one truck because you need that. And this is what's gonna get you guys excited: a Gargantuan Squig off. Roar! Yeah. We got a Gargantuan Squig off second place. Let's go. All right. Um, two units of Gretchen, one unit of Knobs with Power Claws, one big brick of Squig Hog Boys, followed by one small unit, and then only one Storm Boy unit. You can't afford that many sometimes when you're playing with the Gargantuan Squig off. But he's worth it, you guys. With this T13, he has capability to be hard as nails because he's not a vehicle technically, so he can use that. So let's get on and see what he did with his Squig So let's go into his first matchup. Not nah, can actually click his first match. Yeah, Custodes getting crumped on by the gargantuan squig off <laughs> sorry i didn't mean to laugh like that but yes i did all right so blade champion with veiled blade uh shield captain with a Lars terminator armor and ceaseless hunter uh veil blade just i gotta look at that again but uh it's like an in the cape obviously it makes him better at fighting but it's a very good enhancement uh guardians big brick of termies and small unit of termies i actually do like two man units of termies people like to go back and forth with me on there like oh why would you bring two they don't do anything they really do um just two of them if you let them get off they get off so but also i'm a melee army so i'm thinking like oh i gotta go cover the distance on them and actually beat them up so we got the grav tanks wardens and then the venatar atlantis these guys have free rapid ingress um that's actually pretty pretty great when you rapid ingress a terminator unit and the venatari pretty much because they're free it becomes like a oh, okay okay now all of a sudden they're occupying the table they're giving me possible charges um they think they're going to get reliable charges on me next turn so yeah it's it's no joke when you actually have that to come in and it's just kind of free so very nice and then we have the inquisitorial henchman and then for the veiled bl champion blade or whatever it's add to attack characteristics to the bear's melee weapon punts per battle the command the command phase triple its objective control okay cool so he gets two more attacks and then he also um just triples his objective control which actually does matter because it's habited against me where he just was like oh i'm the last guy alive triple and he he made a tie okay so but still gargantuan squig off he doesn't have anything to I mean we do have the sorry i shouldn't say that because he did have the grav tanks here let me check again he didn't have the grav tanks but the grav tanks can still kind of whiff if the orc player goes turn first he still has enough time to occupy move up the table he still has the knobs to kill and trade out the enemy units he has great potential to fight and death there um and then you know the, the the flash gets still can get their 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 worth in it's just you know for the most part they're gonna have cover and be taking good saves so you still have to play the mission correctly um let me take a look actually yeah so 96 point get up on that one that was pretty good um but yeah sorry i was just thinking off the top of my head and you don't have anything to kill maz and the beast boss at this that point if you're just dealing with the gargantuan squig off and when he does get into combat he's he's crumping he's crumping he's a great tank shot target as well um so yeah um great job by there by winning sorry i was clicking the wrong thing so let's get into a second matchup with eldar so we're just seeing all these eldar and the orc players just straight up winning so um and have you seen as when I showed you the matchup faction by faction, the orcs weren't in a bad spot versus Eldar. So we have, we can go over it again if you guys want to chat. Just let me know how you guys want this to go. I'm trying to make it a more, you know, different way to uh, start one of those wall Wednesdays so you guys uh, enjoy it. Uh, Death Jester with Fate Messengers, uh, Fars Farseer Skyrunner, the Vizark, Ying Khan, and Yavrin. Sorry, I just wanted to say like, um, that's how they talk, you know. Wave Serpent. So only one, okay, one wave serpent. You don't see that too many. Oh, Corsair Void Carrier. Carried. Okay, I, I don't even know what's happening here. Um, um, Rangers, Rangers, Skyweaver, Skyweaver, Walkers, Incubi, Ravager, Ravager, Ravager. Okay, the Ravagers are a great source of the light of the lances, though. Um, this isn't the most, you know, 
meta. Okay, sorry. I don't, I don't know how I missed this. Of course, it has Yanari. It has to be Yanari to have Yavrina in there. So um, I can't pretend that I know exactly what Yanari does right now because I've just it just skipped my mind because I've always seen Eldar. But, um, you know, he did do good into the first matchup getting a... I'm sorry, the second matchup getting an 88 point win there. It's just, yeah, I'm not going to pretend I know exactly what they do. I know they give you the potential to have similar rules to the, just the core Eldar um, with their allies kind of adopting them. But as a whole, you know, I don't know how that would go into orcs necessarily right now. But I don't think orcs have any harder time than they would against the typical Eldar with that. As for his third matchup, everybody watch tonight. This is uh, another Beast Boss list. Or sorry, another orc green tide on green tide matchup. So let's see Beast Boss followed by Beast Boss on Squigasaur, Death. Killer War Trike with the four up feel no pain. Uh, Captain Bad Rock, Mazrog, Nama, Smash Group, Edward Skill Chopper, and War Boss Follow Me Lad. So very similar, but the difference is he has a Death Killer War Trike. Pretty much exactly the same. So B Snagger Boys, one, two, three truck, one unit of Flash Gets, two units of Gretchen. We got the Scapple unit, the Brick of Squig Hog Boys, and Storm Boys, and War Bite. Okay. As for this matchup, I'm very interested to see how this awesome matchup would have been. Um, you know, even with this gargantuan squig hog having its great durability, in reality, if the right orc unit goes into it, like squig hog boys, it can still crump them, right? Um, and he does have Ed Wapa kill chop on the Nabon Smash Squig. This would be very much so a um general ship on general ship kind of matchup. And honestly, I think the person that goes second has kind of the, the advantage here. Um, so I would like to know who actually went second here, but that would have been really fun to talk about. Uh, but great job. It ended up being one of his uh, more challenging games at the 72 point win. Going into his fourth game, it's into World Eaters. Fight me. Oh, you got crumped. You wanted to fight. He fought you all right. So we got World Eaters, Demon Prince, and more. Yeah, these is pretty much the two main characters you actually need. So the Helm of Brazen Ire gives him like a two up armor saves and halves his damage. And then the Berserker Gleave, like I said, he's the master of indirect because he fights first. Um, He really rolls against characters. He has dev wounds. It's like flat four or five damage, something ridiculous like that. Um, So he's really annoying. He put like 20 some damage into any character in the game. So we have uh, Jackals. So the reason why this world eater uh, demon prince is actually really good as he has an aura of a four up invuln from six inches so he himself is hard to kill he'll hide in runes and then string out his four up invuln so you stack the four up invuln with the jackals five of feel no pain so you just chain daisy chain back to him and you have these great screens actually um one unit of corn berserkers a big unit most likely pretty much to deliver just the master of indirect combat one rhino we have a big unit of exalted a bound so i'm not used to seeing that and then a land raider um followed by terminators okay so th- this list was starting to look kind of fire and then it kind of now it's kind of like i'm not sure how fire that is still a good list um as a whole but um this is where i said let me see if we keep going yeah i think having mauler fiends would be better there and then two brigands even one more brigand would be good too but two brigands is an excellent choice so this is still a very good world leaders list no no doubt about that it's just not the best in my opinion um as the terminators aren't really pulling their weight most of the time and then you're still playing that price for the land raider um so as a whole as you can see there's not enough damage at range and gargantuan squig on going to close the distance here start destroying getting his point trades worth the knobs are going to scapple out their fighting units and then he just doesn't even have enough bodies to screen because he only has two units of jackals and none of them are bricks because some people will choose to make the bricks um so they're like annoying four up on five up and it is very annoying but either way 100 points against that great job going into this fifth matchup cody duty i don't know why i said his name we have okay this is not your yanari so we have farseer skyrunner night spear and then yavrin so there's actually a very light on the characters night spinner rangers shadow specter skyweavers war walkers warp spiders warps okay so we brought back the warp spiders this is really pivotal for the potential scoring okay and he's of course i was feeling confident and then all of a sudden he threw the dark eldar twist in here so he has the beast master beast master mandrakes for the you know skirmishing ravenger 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 for the the lances and then scourges for some more lances so that's interesting and then just some beast master probably just for a little bit of fighting here um, moving around the board but not a bad you know not a terrible list i would say it's not i still don't think it's as optimal as just straight up eldar but um people are starting to find a lot of success in running you know the, the dark eldar they're a little cheeky um they're pretty dang cheap some of them can fight a little bit you do get pretty cheap lances um and as a whole having a lot of little units typically is hard for other factions to deal with you're getting a lot of activations and scoring potential but with orcs you're just giving us a lot of stuff to win skirmishes against because we don't lose those skirmishes um but we did lose that one you know what i'm saying because they're just too much points too much points 
in general of activations against a gargantuan squigoth like i said so um there's nothing for him to really get his points return here on this list to really deal with i still don't think it's the best version of running um and he had a bunch of lances of running eldar but it is you know a different way because you get such cheap lances and then you get cheap activation so that did end up working into um joel right as you could oh sorry i don't like like that i was told i was looking at the wrong thing i don't know sorry guys i was looking at the opposite he lost to joel but this could be how what his as you can see it was a close game by 66 to 72 sorry my notes i was like i thought you won that one but in general um it could have gone either way when it's that close of a game specifically because of both things that were stated he did have a lot of dark lances he did have a lot of activations um but as a whole joel ended up did winning that it was his last game sorry i had a brain fart but he ended up losing um and this is really what it was is this is what could be threatening to you to a board near you is cast base brains um with their gun lines and here he is just a daka 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 all right okay i just felt like i had to say daka 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 so we have the chaos lord chaos lord chaos lord uh the dark commune uh huron blackheart and master possession um you don't really see abaddon you don't see abaddon on this list but you see him on a lot of the other lists that are coming out and being uh very reliable for cast base marines then you see sorry black then or something now master possession okay got him cultist legionnaires one two rhinos uh and a cursed cultist unit with the nurmark of nurgle and sorry gotta look at this and the chosen followed by another unit chosen three units of chosen and possessed followed by warp talons nurglings Ciliax, which is a very slylax sorry a very fighty character and then blue scribes so this is just a very unusual um dark sorry chaos space marines list um warp talons are making their way their comeback they're just very very cheap for what they're doing and their movement shenanigans um so if you love that uh possessed when they're unmarked they can pretty much choose to throttle their damage when they go to you make a dark pact and the chosen can um pretty much go either way they do have a little bit of shooting but it's not really that reliable for killing against orcs and the accursed cultist so as a whole sorry i'm just looking at this list this list is just very unusual that's what i want to look up i forgot what huron blackheart does that's what i was like what does what does your here on i was like there's something weird here here on blackheart so here on blackheart's ability is well as leading a unit at one to objective control of that unit um okay and he gives redeploying oh he's a red part of red corsairs is pretty cool um and once per battle when the enemy unit ends a normal move within nine inches of this model's unit if this model is not within engagement range it can move up to d6 so it's reactive movement as well so he's a very cool unit but he is specifically just a red corsair so that makes sense why we're kind of like well i'm like whoa i'm not was not expecting this um coming to a game near you and he fights all right he has six attacks a strength five minus two two damage so or he can just do a, a sweep of attacks for 10 attacks that's interesting um so for this list he just went for i'm gonna actually fight you oh there's a chaos lord that's who the other one i was gonna look at make sure i didn't miss his capability that i'm over my head um let's see chaos lord is there any capabilities that you're executing he gives you the free strap but then besides that um he can throttle his own damage so it's really about the free strat which with all these different marks that you're getting on this table yeah you're going to need to activate those so that you can get um you know the th throttling potential of either slanish or corn whatever you want to do there so this was a very techie actual kind of list where you can't really just look at it and know exactly what he did is it was pretty much very matchup dependent on what he was trying to do um between his marks and all his characters for three strats and his weird movement but it doesn't really have all the dog Daga Daga that you would think that it would have. So this is just straight up small skirmish activation fighting in reliable manner with odd cheap chaff, which is interesting. That's an interesting kind of matchup to go into. I know I wouldn't have uh expected that. So yeah. But that was his last game, and he still put up set good points into that, considering that you're fighting so much small units that have these weird um, you know, because you can end up giving them lethal, so you can actually tear down the beast boss on Squigasaur and stuff like that. So in that kind of matchup, having more orc units that could kind of skirmish it out and win fights would be a better way to kind of have to deal with that um but as a whole i mean i'm sure that guy was just an excellent player considering he won the whole event